I want to ask you the question, have you thought about your future? Do you ever think about your future? Or are you just constantly thinking about the present moment? Look at 1 Timothy 4, 7 through 8. 1 Timothy chapter 4, 7 through 8. It says, But refuse profane and old wise fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. Now look at this, what he says here. Having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. So you see that? That which is to come. Godliness is profitable not only in this life, but also in that which is to come. But what are people more focused on? Things like bodily exercise. But it only profits a little, right? It only profits right here and now in this life a little. And actually it only profits for the most part up until you quit doing it. Like say you do a lot of exercise for two years and then you don't do it anymore for the next two years. It really isn't profiting. All that exercise you did isn't really profiting you anymore. But godliness, the godliness you do, it stays with you. And it goes on for an eternity. Have you thought about eternity? Have you thought about your future? You know, there's more to life than just this life that you can see with your eyes. Every minute counts. It's like when you got... When when you when you were born, God took an hourglass, turned it upside down, and those grains of sand began to fall to the bottom. And every one of those grains of sand is a gift. Every one of those grains of sand matters. And then when you got saved, it really started to matter. What have you done with Jesus Christ since you've been saved? Or have you been saved? Examine yourself. Was there a time when you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and got saved? You know, I hate the phrase, let's go kill some time. We shouldn't kill some time. We should redeem the time because the days are evil. We should see time as a gift and every second, every little grain of sand matters for something. We shouldn't want to kill time. Every little bit of downtime that you have, you should be inserting something godly there to do. So let's think about this. Have you thought about your future? You know, you need to do today what you'll wish you had done 10 years from now. You know, there's some things I wish I would have done 10 years ago. Are some things that I wish I would have started 10 years ago. If I'd started it 10 years ago, I'd probably be almost done with it. But I haven't even started. And in 10 years from now, if I don't go ahead and start now, 10 years from now, I'm going to say, well, I wish I would have done that 10 years ago. You need to do today what you wish you'll have done 10 years from now. First off, have you thought about your future, where you're going to go when you die? Everybody goes to two places. If you died right now, 2 Corinthians 5.8, the Apostle Paul says, We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. If, you died, if you're saved and you died right now, you're going to be present with the Lord. You're going to go to be with Him. But if you're lost, in Luke 16.23... The rich man says in, in hell, he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. So, you don't want to be like the rich man who lived a rich lifestyle, but then he died, and he woke up in hell. Obviously, he wasn't thinking about his future, his eternal future. 
Have you thought about your future? Where are you going to spend eternity? I also want to talk about you can change your future. You can change it. Now, you can't go back and change your past, but you can change your future. And the rich man, when he was in hell, he said, I have five brethren. And he was telling Abraham he wanted somebody to go talk to those five brethren so that they don't come to that horrible place. You see, he started thinking about not only his future, his eternal future, he started thinking about other people's eternal future. So you can change not only your future in eternity, you can change other people's future in eternity. But you have to do it now while you're still here. Where are you going, heaven or hell? Where are the people around you going? Your friends, your family, they're going, are they going to heaven or hell? You need to think about this future. If you're not sure, it's very simple to be saved. You come to Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner that you are. You tell him, I know you died for me. I know you shed your blood. I know you were buried and resurrected. And I want to put my faith on you and rely on you to be my payment for sin. Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's that simple. You can change your eternal future by doing that. Start thinking about the rapture. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. That could happen today. And <clears throat> if you're just going around not doing anything, not even serving the Lord, you're going to be called out. If you're saved, you're going to be called out at the rapture, and you're going to get up to that judgment seat of Christ, and you're, you're going to wish that you had done a lot more for God than you've actually done. You see, people are one breath away from going to hell, one heartbeat away from opening their eyes in hell, and we could literally be seconds away from the rapture. Are you thinking about your future? Have you thought about changing your future? But men are only concerned with the temporal, the here and now. They think this life is all there is. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. That's what we need to be focusing on. The things that we can't see. The Lord. Heaven. The judgment seat of Christ. The rapture. You can't see all those things. You accept those things by faith, but that focusing on those things is what's going to get you somewhere in your future. Start thinking about the eternal. Start, start thinking about eternal rewards. Something that, that will change your future is when you begin to start thinking about eternal rewards. In Revelation 4.10, it talks about some saints casting their crowns before the throne. You don't want to get up there in your future and not have any crowns to cast at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Romans 14.10, Paul talks about, he says, But why dost thou judge thy brother? Why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. All of us. You see, why do you go to psychics? Why do you go to palm readers, mind readers, fortune tellers, whatever you want to call them? And pay your money for a fraud to supposedly tell you your future. You can go to the Dollar Tree, go to the book section, and buy a Bible for a dollar, and it tells you your future for a dollar. You can go online, type in King James Holy Bible, and read the Bible online. It would tell you your future. He just said, we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. 
So everybody listening to my voice right now that's saved, every single one of you is going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. So there's going to come a time when all that matters is what you did with the Lord, what you did for the Lord. You can change your future by going ahead and living for Him now. Suffer now, rejoice later. You know that saying, no pain, no gain. You live for the flesh now, don't expect to do well at the judgment seat of Christ. 1 Corinthians 3, 12 through 15, Paul says, Now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, so he's talking about this foundation. See, when you got saved, your foundation, you got a foundation. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. The moment you got saved, your foundation is the Lord Jesus Christ. So for the rest of your saved life on this earth, you are building on that foundation. And this building that you're building, when you get to the judgment seat of Christ, you are going to present that to the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're building with gold, silver, and precious stones, it's going to make it through the fire, and you're going to get that back. If you're building with wood, hay, and stubble, it's going to burn up, and you're not going to get that back. So have you thought about your future? What are you building with right now? What are you putting in that building of yours? Are you building it with wood, hay, and stubble, or gold, silver, precious stones? It says, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. So maybe you're doing a lot of good works, but the motive ain't right. And those good works, even the good works, turn out to be wood, hay, and stubble. But if you're building with good things, you're building with gold, silver, precious stones. It says, if any man's work abide, which he hath built their own, built thereupon, if it makes it through the fire, you know, it says he shall receive a reward. You're going to get something for it. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So you see, you're still saved. You just won't get any rewards because... When you were down here, you weren't thinking about your future. You were thinking about the temporal. You weren't thinking about heavenly rewards. In 2 Corinthians 5.10, Paul says it again, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. A lot of people want to criticize you. If you believe in eternal security, once saved, always saved, they say, well, you believe you can just live however you want to live. That's not true if you're a Bible believer because you're going to be judged for the things done in the body, whether it be good or bad. You're going to be judged for your service for the Lord. What have you done for the Lord Jesus Christ since you've been saved? When you got saved, it's like he turned that hourglass back over again. And you got so much so many grains of sand in that hourglass. God knows when that last grain of sand is going to hit the bottom, what are you going to do with each one of those grains of sand? Each grain of sand is important. Every second counts. In Matthew six nineteen through 20, the Lord says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. You see all these celebrities? They're just setting up for themselves treasures down here where it can be corrupted, where it can be stolen, where they got to worry about it. They're not thinking about their future, eternal future, If they probably don't even believe in eternal future, where your rewards, your belongings last forever. Paul says in Colossians 3, 2, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. You want to change your future? Start thinking about the eternal. Start thinking about eternal rewards. Start thinking about reigning 
and not raining. Think about rewards or no rewards. Start thinking about raining or not raining. You see, your raining is conditioned on how you live for him. Men are worried about having their house paid off down here. They're not worried about their living conditions in eternity. It says in 2 Timothy 2.12, If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Not denies their salvation, denies the reign. Look at the context, it's about the reign. If you don't suffer with him here, he's going to deny you a reign with him over there. You'll still get to be with him in, etern in eternity and the millennial reign there for a thousand years. You'll still go into the kingdom, but you won't have any reign there. And he talks about Luke nineteen seventeen, and he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, have thou authority over ten cities. So you be faithful and just very little. Just doing what the Lord wants you to do. Read your Bible, pray, go to work, be good to people. You may get 10 cities for that. Go the extra mile, maybe you'll get 20. Revelation 20 and verse 6, it talks about those that live and reign with Christ a thousand years. If you live for God now, then you'll get the fame and the fortune and the things your heart desires in the millennium. Just don't ha don't focus on having that stuff right now. Think about your future. Think about rewards versus no rewards. Think about raining versus not raining. Think about the marriage supper of the Lamb versus the supper of the great God. You see, there's two suppers coming in the future. One of them is the marriage supper of the Lamb. John talks about it in Revelation 19.9. He says, And he saith unto me, Right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. So the marriage supper of the Lamb. You see, the rapture is going to happen one day. If you're saved, you're going to be called out in the rapture. You're going to go to the judgment seat of Christ. Then you're going to go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And that's the supper you want to be in. Now, if you're not saved and you make it through the, somehow make it through the tribulation, at the end, there's going to be another supper. It's the supper of the great God. And that's where the fowls are going to come down and eat the carcasses of the men the Lord's just trampled up. You see, you don't want to be a part of that supper. Have you thought about your future? Which supper are you going to be at? The marriage supper of the Lamb or the supper of the great God? I want to be at the marriage supper of the Lamb. I'm saved, and I'm going to the marriage supper of the Lamb, and I, we don't know much about it. I don't know if you live good down here. Maybe you'll get some extra dessert or something, extra food. I know that we'll eat in our glorified bodies because the Lord, He ate in His glorified body. And I know that it's not to stay alive. You're not eating to stay alive. You're just eating for the fun of it, just for the pleasure of it. And you think you got a perfect meal down here? There's no perfect meals down here. But you're going to have perfect meals up there. Have you thought about your future? Which supper have you made your reservations at. Think about the winning side versus the losing side. You see, these the nations are already going against the Lord Jesus Christ. They're already headed that way. And that's what's going to happen at the second coming. They're going to make war against him <clears throat> and his army. Zephaniah 3 8 says, <clears throat> Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour out upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. You see, that's the losing side. 
those nations are going to gather together against the Lord Jesus Christ, and they're on the losing side. He's going to come down on a white horse. Revelation 1 talks about, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. He's going to be clothed in a vesture dipped in blood. He's going to stomp them like a bunch of grapes. You know, it talks about in Isaiah 63, Who is he that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra, red in his apparel? And he's going to be stomping them like they're a bunch of grapes. They're the losing side. Are you on that or the winning side that comes back with the Lord? You know, the armies in heaven that follow him on white horses. Jude talks about Enoch saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. Which side are you on? Have you thought about your future? Now, you can be on the winning side this time. You know, if you're like me, you've always been picked last and ended up on the losing side. But get saved, you'll be on the winning side. If the moment you get saved, God automatically picks you for his team. You see, God wants you to get saved. The devil wants you not to get saved. You just got to break the tie. You got to choose of your own free will and say, hey, I want to be on the Lord's team. And you'll come back on the winning side. So think about your future. Is it going to be heaven or hell? Is it going to be the lake of fire or New Jerusalem? You know, everybody that's in hell right now, there's going to come a time when God calls them up out of hell and they're going to stand at the great white throne judgment. In Revelation 20, 11 through 15, it says, And I saw a great white throne judgment. You see, the apostle John, an amazing character, he got took forward in time. He saw the future. He saw the great white throne. He said, I saw a great white throne. And him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Have you thought about your future? The great white throne judgment? Are you going to be judged at the great white throne judgment? Or are you going to be one of the ones doing the judging? You know, that if you're a saint, you're going to be judging angels there. If you're lost, you're going to be judged on how bad the lake of fire is going to be for you. You're going to have the loss from all ages. And you're going to have <clears throat> tribulation and millennial saints. They get judged there as well since the judgment seat of Christ was already passed. But for the most part, it's about the lost judging about how hot the lake of fire is, just how hot that lake of fire is going to be for them. Have you thought about your future? Are you going to be judgment seat of, judged at the judgment seat of Christ for your service? Or... Judge at the great white throne judgment. Are you going to be in New Jerusalem? Or are you going to be in the lake of fire? So think about your future. Here's some more things that will change your future. When you pray, it changes things. Look at James 4, 2. James 4 and verse 2. It says, You lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight in war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. You know, you could have more stuff. You could have better things for your Christian life. You could have more souls saved. You could have all this other stuff and all these benefits, but you don't pray. You see, prayer changes your future just like isaiah 38 1 through 5 it talks about hezekiah he was sick unto death but what did he do he prayed god gave him 15 more years now some things that happened in those 15 years wasn't good but still the lord added to him 15 years maybe you're sick pray and god may add to you 15 years 
Reading your Bible changes the future. Reading your Bible is preventive maintenance. If you read your Bible, it will change your future because it changes how you are and what you'll do in the future. It says in John 15, 3, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. You know, you're getting your pops cleaned out when you read the scriptures. If your pops cleaned out, you're not going to have it. It's not going to be clogged up in the future and be a mess. You know, it's like getting the oil changed in your car. Preventive maintenance. It's like getting your teeth cleaned. Preventive maintenance. You won't have a cavity show up. A lot less likely to have one show up. Reading the Bible changes your future. Humbling yourself now will change your future. If you humble yourself now, you'll be exalted later. 1 Peter 5 and verse 6. Humble yourself, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. In due time. In the future. You'll be exalted if you humble yourself now. But what do people do now? They want to be exalted now. They want to be on the top now. They want to be a diatrophies that love it to have the preeminent place. Proverbs 16, 18, Pride goeth before destruction and in haughty spirit before a fall. You see, that that just told you your future right there. You got pride? Well, that's what you have before destruction comes. So destruction's coming if you got pride. You got a haughty spirit? Well, that's before a fall. So I was telling you, you got a haughty spirit? You can expect a fall. It's coming. So have you thought about your future? Start thinking about your future. Start trying to change your future for the better. Quit focusing on the temporal things. Quit focusing on the flesh. Quit focusing on the world. Quit listening to the devil. Get in the Word of God. Get in a prayer life. Get in fellowship with the Lord. That will change your future for the better.